ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به ارحم ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد My dear brothers and sisters in Al-Islam, Alhamdulillah, Thumma, Alhamdulillah, we gather on this day, this beautiful day of Jummah, this day which is the Eid of the Muslims of the week. And we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making us Muslims here today and giving us an excellent religion in Al-Islam. Allah Azza says, Inna dina inda al-Islam. The only religion, the only faith, the only way of life that is acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Islam. And we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us an excellent example in the Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم الله عز وجل لقد كان لكم في رسول الله اسوه حسنه really find an excellent example in the messenger muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم i pray you, my dear muslim that we are able to understand our religion we are people ahlul quran ahlus sunnah amin ya rabbal alamin ya salah suwana tala di bisbarak and this month of rajab this month of shaban and balig na ramadan that allah bring food for us the month of ramadan amin ya rabbal alamin amma ba as for the topic i wish to speak about today Subhana, a lot can change in two weeks. <laughs> this time two weeks ago, I was in the Haram in Mecca, Subhanallah. I had the tawfiq, virtue, the benefit, the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lead a jama'ah, alhamdulillah. Things were very different two weeks ago. I was there, listened to the main imam, mashallah, at the Grand Mosque in Mecca, alhamdulillah. So much changes. And as you know me as an imam, normally I like to reflect on positivity, the good experience that I had, and there was much that I can speak about, subhanAllah. But time has changed, yeah? Two weeks, so much has changed. We are now globally affected by this virus, subhanAllah. To the point it's affecting people who want to make Umrah and Hajj. To the point it's stopping people making the Tawaf <coughs> as part of the Umrah. To enter the Masa, which is the point of Safa and Marwa. So to many people, this causes alarm. To many people, to hear the word a plague or a virus spreading causes alarm. So that's why I decided my topic today would be about ibtila, which means trial and tribulation. And I want us to remember that history repeats itself. Though we are going through something very unprecedented in many of our lives, in my short life, though I look old, my short life, I never experience anything like this in this country where I live, subhanAllah. That something globally can affect us. Something globally where our heart is at the, the Qibla can affect <coughs> us and the Muslims world, worldwide. So history repeats itself. But before doing so, I don't want us to forget that subhanAllah, there are many other worthy causes we could speak about. For example, the suffering of the Muslims around the world, our brothers and sisters in India, in particular in recent, recent days, in recent weeks, our thoughts are with them, may Allah remove the dhulm from them. Amen. Amen. And also, on the 5th and the 6th of the 7th of March, 22 years ago, I want us to remember an incident, an incident of great suffering for the Muslims in Kosovo in particular. And the family of Adam Yashari, many people died from this family. I want us to remember them as well, because imagine 22 years ago, they were under great suffering as well. So we ask that Allah SWT has mercy on their souls. Patient to all the family members that are there, that Allah raise them amongst the shuhada and grants them Jannah to Firdaus. Amin ya Rabbal Alameen. So Amma Ba'ad, that's for the topic, we need to appreciate that whenever a calamity occurs in the, in the community, throughout time, no calamity or disaster can ever occur except by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma asaba min musibatin illa bi idnillah. Never is there a calamity to disaster or anything like that except by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
I mean, Allah is not heedless of what is happening. We may say, what is happening? Ya Allah, look to what is happening. Why are you not helping us? Why are you not sending us help? Mata Nasrullah, we may be saying some things like this. But Allah is aware of everything. And everything that occurs, wala hawla wala quwata illa billah. No power might accept by that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we appreciate that a calamity occurs. There's a reason, a greater reason, a greater hikmah that we may not understand ourselves. And we should appreciate that the fact that we say our kalima, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu rasulu, the fact that we testify that there's none worthy of worship but Allah, and that Muhammad <coughs> is his servant and slave and the final messenger, means we are going to be tested. Ibtila, you will be tested in many different ways. Physically yourself, or by family members, or the community, or the wider humanity. There will be tests. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ashadu al-nas bala al-anbiya, thumma as-salihun fal amthal fal amthal. The most tested of people are the Prophets. Most tested. Whenever we open our books of knowledge, the Quran, the Sunnah, the books of the ulama, and we read the stories, and we learn about religion, we find that the most tested people are the Prophets, anbiya. Then are Salihun, I mean the righteous people. So we know in this Ummah, the Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most righteous is the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But then he said, Qarmi and my generation. My generation is who? The companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I want to give two main examples today, two main lessons today, inshallah ta'ala, in this first portion of my khutbah. Firstly, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala can prevent a thing. No matter how much you desire, and Allah can prevent you going to Umrah. My du'as and my thoughts are with all of those people who intended to go recently and Allah has prevented it. But know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows your intention and there is a reward already there because of your patience. And maybe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up a time which is better for you to go, inshallah. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you immensely for your patience. Amin. Ya Rabbi Amin. Amin. So, words of solace I want to give is that if we are prevented, would it surprise you? To know that the Prophet ﷺ himself was prevented from making Umrah. You know, sometimes we look to ourselves and we feel pity for ourselves. Whoa, why did this happen to us? I spent a lot of money, my family, the group, so so. We start calculating this sort of losses that we feel financially or personally. I'm going to give you the first example, which is the example of the Prophet ﷺ himself was prevented from making Umrah. And we say he's our example, yes? Let us take some lesson from this story, inshallah. In the sixth year after Hijri, remember this is the, when the Prophet ﷺ was in Medina. What had happened the years previously? He had fought the battle of Badr. He had fought the battle of Uhud. He had fought the battle of Khandak. Three battles, big. Anyone who goes to Umrah and you go to visit Medina, quite often we take you on ziyarah to see these places. Because this is part of our heritage, our history. In the sixth year of Hijri, the Prophet Sallallahu he has a dream. And we know the ru'ya, the dreams of the Prophets and the Anbiya is wahi, revelation. In this dream, the Prophet Sallallahu saw that he is leading people, a group, and their head are shaved, and they're entering Mecca. So he, Sallallahu Alaihi he mentioned this to his companions, and they said, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Ya Rasul, we make all of us, we make the intention to go. And in one narration, he said that 1400 of the companions, Sahaba, went with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And another narration, 1500. They all made the intention to make Umrah. We're in Medina, mashallah. And anyone who's ever started to do the Umrah from there, there's a beautiful masjid in Dhul Hulaifa where the Miqat is for those who are entering into the state of Haram to go to make Umrah or Hajj. They said, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Here we are, our Lord, here we are. How happy were they? Why? Because they looked at this. Five years they've been fighting, the six year now. They are at war with Quraysh, the people of Mecca. How are they ever to enter? But if this is a revelation in the form of the dream of the Prophet indeed we are going to enter in Aman, peace. So they set off. They set off in the Ahram, they took no weapons with them because Hajj is not about fighting. The only thing that they took was a blade to sacrifice the animal. 
That's all they took with them. But when they reached the point outside Mecca, Hudaybiyah, the Quraysh, they had other, uh, other ideas. And they stopped the Muslims. And they knew they came not to fight, because remember, this is the enemy. So what should happen here? The Prophet Sallallahu has given conditions. They want to come into a treaty, a truce. What do they say? They say to the Prophet Sallallahu these are the conditions of the truce. That this year you will not be able to make Umrah. That's the first thing they say, SubhanAllah. Imagine this, you are going to have a peace meeting. And the first thing they say is that before we negotiate anything, your expectations has to change. You are not going to make Umrah to this year. Not today, not tomorrow, not this year at all. In fact, the condition, the first condition we are going to say is that you have to come back next year. SubhanAllah. If I tell you stories of people who made intention to make Hajj Umrah and they've actually got to the airport in the UK and they've had to turn back because of Qadr Allah. People have gone all the way to Jeddah and they've not been able to make the Hajj Umrah because of the Qadr of Allah. This can happen. So the condition is you will go back. The second is that we will stop fighting for 10 years. The third condition, and there are many conditions, I'm just going to give you some of the main condition. The third condition is that those who want to join you, they can join your party, and those who want to join us can join our party. Hakala. So, Hudaybiyah, it is known as the treaty or the peace agreement of Hudaybiyah. <coughs> the Sahaba, they are listening to the Prophet Sallallahu in this negotiation, and then it comes to write the treaty. Look to the first test that some of the Sahaba face. The first test is that when you write it, it was written Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim min who? Muhammad Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi In the name of Allah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we don't translate these names, but most of them beneficent, the merciful. From who? This treaty is from who? Muhammad Rasulullah, the messenger of Allah. Straight away, Quraysh, they say, we can't agree to these wordings. Change them. Who is this ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? The first test the Sahaba face, who is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim? Change it. Say, Bismika Allahumma. In the name of Allah who we understand. So the Prophet says to the scribe at the time who is Ali, cross out Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim and write, Bismika Allahumma. Ali, he does this. The next thing they say is, who is Muhammad Rasulullah? Who is Muhammad the Messenger of Allah? We don't know this. We only know Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Cross out Rasulullah and put Ibn Abdullah. To which Ali he starts crying, he weeps, and he says, Ya Rasulullah, after I said, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa Ashadu anna Muhammad and Abdul Rasul, I will never cut out that you are not the Messenger of Allah. SubhanAllah. To which the Prophet Sallallahu who cannot read and write, remember, he says to Ali, Show me where so I can cross it out. So the Prophet Sallallahu crosses this. This is part of a treaty. And then again, one of the prisoners that the Quraysh were bringing was a Muslim. Omar who was there at the time. I want you to understand this is human nature. These emotions. We're not angels. We have emotion. Omar, he says, a Muslim person being taken as prisoner by Quraysh. He said, Ya Rasulullah, are we going to allow this person, this Muslim, to be taken? The Prophet ﷺ had already signed the treaty. He was waiting for Quraysh to sign their part. He says to the Quraysh, give us this prisoner of yours and then complete the treaty. They said, no, you have already signed. Those who joined you have joined you. Those who joined us have joined us. He didn't join you, we caught, we caught him. He's our prisoner. So the Prophet said, pleaded again, said, do it for me as a mercy. He prophesied to me all the different types of words that you and I would try to use in a difficult situation. Quraysh was not having it. And in the end, the Prophet had to let this prisoner go and told him, have patience, there is a reward waiting for you. And then Quraysh, they signed this treaty. And then the Sahaba, they're turning back. The Prophet is turning back. To which Omar, remember, he just witnessed this. He said, Ya Rasulullah, are you not the true messenger of Allah? Look to how Omar speaks now. Are you not the messenger of Allah? To which the Prophet said, indeed, I am the messenger of Allah. Are we not on the right religion, Dinul Haq? And they're on the wrong religion, Dinul Batir. Indeed, the Prophet said, indeed, we are in the religion of Haq. This is the truth. 
To which Omar he said, then why do you allow us to be humiliated? To the war burdens. It's not just to you and I and every, any other person. This is to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that I am somebody that does not backtrack on a treaty that I've signed. I've signed it and this is the way of Islam. That if you sign a treaty, you're violent. You do not betray treaties. Omar, he was so upset. He went to who? He went to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. And he said the same old things to Abu Bakr said, Ya Abu Bakr, is Muhammad not the messenger of Allah? To which, of course, Abu Bakr said, indeed, he is the messenger of Allah. <laughs> Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Are we not on the deen of Haq and they on the deen of falsehood? Indeed we are. Then why are we turning back? Why are we not able to do Umrah? Why are we not getting this prisoner back? Why are we not doing all of these things? To which Abu Bakr, he said, we obey the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he signed a treaty and we obey him in this Subhanallah. You know, Omar, many years later, he regretted the way he spoke like this to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, because he's Khairu Khalqillah, he's the best of creation, Subhanallah. He is this person that when he spoke to you, you would have to listen because he wouldn't raise his voice, he wouldn't get angry. The only time he spoke loud was when he was on the mimba. That is the best of creation that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala created. Omar, he said, later years, I regretted this. I regretted this. And you know what he used to do? He used to fast. He used to give sadaqah. He said, all of the charity that in, in just said that this remorse, this regret could go, subhanAllah. The Sahaba indeed what they did on that occasion, they stopped at Hudaybiyah. And the Prophet Sallallahu was at a loss. What do we do in this situation? My companions, they, they're very upset with me. To which Umm Salama, who was there at the time, said to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi your companions love you. Your companions love you. Do the slaughter, shave your hair, and they will follow you indeed. And indeed they follow this, subhanAllah. And what happened the following year? The Prophet ﷺ, he made the Ummah. See, just to show that we can be tested as an Ummah. And why not? Because this is the way the Sunnah of Allah. Allah tested the Prophet ﷺ. Allah tested his pious companion. And indeed Allah will continue to test us like this. Because history does what? Repeats itself. Repeats itself all the time. So this is the first example I wanted to mention. The second example I want to mention briefly again regarding Omar. Okay. Is that. At the moment, we are all worried about this coronavirus, COVID-19 and its fault, yes? And indeed, there are some concerns that we should take, but we should avoid anything that is falsely reported. This is the important thing. So, to mention Omar again as an example briefly, and this is narrated in Sahih Muslim and Bukhari as well, is that on one occasion, Omar, he set off at the head of a group to go to Sham. Where is Sham? Syria today. When he got to the boundaries, before entering Sham, Syria as it's known present day, his commander of the army, Abu Ubaid bin al-Jarrah, he comes and he says to the Amir al-Mu'mineen, Omar, that verily a plague has broken out in Sham, Syria. A plague, yes? So Omar, he, and I want you to think again here, look, this Omar, who is a human being, he's one of the great companions, but look to how he thinks. There's human nature there. Omar, he does this. He hears this news and he calls Ibn Abbas, who is the narrator of this hadith, to go and get who? The people who are from the earliest of the Muhajir. Those who immigrated for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says to them, there is a situation, there is a plague in Sham, what should we do? So some of them said, Ya Omar, you made a decision to enter Sham, that is the Qadr of Allah, fulfill it. And then others said, no. Really, you have with you some of the kibar of the Sahaba, the great companions, they're the treasure of this Ummah, and other people that are under your charge, you hear her pray, you should return. Save yourselves. Omar says to these people, go away. He says, where are the Ansar? Who are the Ansar? They're the helpers of Medina. Bring them, and he puts the same proposition to them. What should we do? Again, some of them say, Omar, you have made, you have made a decision. Follow the Qadr of Allah, go into Shah. And others say, no, you should save us and those with you from the plague. Again, Omar, he says to them, go away. Now bring to me the Quraysh. Not any Quraysh, those who entered Islam after the Fat, The Kibar, the elder of them, the wise of them, bring them to me. And then he says to them, what should we do? And all of them said unanimously, Ya Omar, we have to turn back. There is a plague there. We cannot go into a plague. We need to turn back. To which Omar, he makes this decision. And he says, 
Rarely, let it be known that I am turning back tomorrow and those who want to join me, join me. To Abu Baidah, remember who is Abu Baidah bin al Jarrah? He's the Amin, the, the guardian of this Ummah, the Prophet said. He's the great commander that conquered Sham. He says to Omar that you're going to now run away from the Qadr of Allah. Omar, when he hears this, he feels very upset. He said, if it was anyone other than you, Abu Bayd, if it was anyone other than you, and he said, Naam, Nafirru, bin Qadrillah, ila Qadrillah. He said, indeed, we are running away from the Qadr of Allah to the Qadr of Allah. And he uses the example where he says to Abu Bayd, look, if you were in a valley and the camel you were riding decided that on one side there's is lush green growth to eat and on the other side the barren, and he chose either one of them to eat. Both of them would have been the Qadr of Allah. So the Qadr of Allah is an understanding that you have to take precaution. You have to make choices. And whilst this discussion was happening, Abdurrahman bin Auf, who was out doing some errands, he rushed back and he heard of the discussion and he said to the people there, and he said to Omar, really let me relate to you the hadith of the Prophet because whenever we have an issue in our ummah, we refer back to the Quran and the Sunnah. He said, the Prophet ﷺ said that whenever any of you hears that there is a plague in a land, do not go towards it. <coughs> and if any of you are in that land, then do not flee from it either. Who said this? Messenger Muhammad ﷺ. I pray, my dear Muslim, that Allah SWT gives an understanding of our religion. There were people sincere towards Allah SWT. That we follow the Quran and the Sunnah in our practice. That we make dua for each another. And then Allah SWT removes the dhulm upon the Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I will say this, and 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 I will say Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala ashfil anbiya wa al-muslimin nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam ajma'in. Ashadu an la ilaha la wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduh rasul. Wa ba'ad. So speaking about history repeats itself, we spoke about Two incidents, how the Prophet ﷺ prevented from Umrah and also how the Sahaba, they prevented themselves from going into an area of plague. Though we know that some of the companions, they did die in this plague. And amongst them, Abu Baidah bin al Jarrah, he did die because of this plague. And as well as him, Mu'ad ibn Jabr. May Allah be pleased with both of them. Amin, Ya Rabbal Alameen. So my last message I want to give you is as a community, we are told as Muslims to take precaution. And it's important we do this. And we should not be foolhardy when it comes to taking sound advice. And he means sound advice. Because the Prophet ﷺ told us, La darara wa la dira. Don't harm yourself, don't harm others. And the current situation that we have with this coronavirus or COVID-19 is that you want to prevent yourself from being harmed and preventing others from being harmed as well, subhanAllah. So always follow sound advice. As you know, as a masjid here, we will give you advice and the situation regards the congregation, the Juma, please again look out for official notices. Don't follow hearsay, please. So what is my last advice I want to give you? SubhanAllah, we have a government. We have a government that we live under that provides us sound advice based upon scientific facts and on research. And one of the things that they said first and foremost for each and every one of us, and it's something that we know is that hygiene is important in combating this virus. So, Hygiene is important. And for a Muslim, this is given. We make wudu five times a day, subhanAllah. We may even do wusa once a day, subhanAllah. So hygiene is one of the paramount things in combating this sort of, this uh, iptila test that we're facing at the moment. So that's one of the first things that we need to do. Secondly, if you are afflicted by it, then remember, don't go and spread it to other people. If you feel a cold or a cough coming on, then the good thing is to dispose of it. Cough into your arm, cough into tissue, and so on. Okay, don't harm others by what you may have or you may not have. We don't know. Also, we are in a season of cold, subhanAllah. So many people will have cold naturally because we're in that season. So again, don't be prejudiced. Don't assume everybody has this. So one of the things that we want to do is avoid fake news. Fake news is one of the worst things that causes what? Hysteria, panic. And as Muslims, we cannot panic. We believe there is a qadr of Allah, but also we believe that kullu nafsin dhaikatun mu'tum alayna turjah. Every soul will taste death. So whether it's now or later will happen. So we don't need to panic about this. And the last thing, my topic, which is the Ibtila, is that we appreciate that some of us may be tested by this. And if this happens, <coughs> this is the Qadr of Allah, 
is something that we knew was written in our destiny, subhanAllah. What we can do is be patient, what we can do is have good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and what we can do is hold on to our religion. And may Allah make us firm for this. Allah, 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 make it, Allah, may Allah make it easy for us to understand. Allah, 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 make, Allah make it easy for us to know Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may be. May Allah make it all those Muslims that are going through many conflicts around the world. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah reward all those Muslims that face conflict and were patient with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah reward them. May Allah have mercy on all their loved ones that passed away. May Allah grant them patience. Uh, may Allah grant them the tawab of holding on to the, 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 the beacon of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah unite all of us in Jannah with the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. We've been commanded to give salat upon the Nabi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad wa kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali